What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. I never thought I'd be saying this again in a long time, but it feels like it's been a long time since we had a new insider build video on this channel. And today we have a new build and it is 22616. There aren't too many new features in this. Uh, of course, I didn't cover the last build that was out either. Uh, but there aren't too many new features that are in this, but I just want to talk about some things that were uh, introduced in this one, as well as some uh, brief highlights of what happened in the last one as well. So without further ado, let's jump in. So here we are right off the bat. I'm on the blog um, because there are some things that you need to know about this dev channel slash beta channel build. 22616 for one uh the watermark is not there anymore before there used to be a watermark in this corner here for um for just telling you what build that you're in the developer build uh, that is not there anymore again this build also is kind of a culmination for uh, build the official windows 11 build 22h2 um, basically the second half 20 uh 2022 of this year that's kind of how they label it um so this is gonna have this is a feature release uh this this everything that's in this build and some of the previous ones we've been testing for a while is is pretty much a feature release it's going to be a feature release for official mainstream people not on the insider channels of windows so right now i can just tell you before i even go into the blog post though is uh as of installing it on this computer it kind of screwed something up already and you can kind of tell what's wrong already and that is here my taskbar so my taskbar has some jank going with it um I thought it was a scaling issue, but it is not. It is in fact, uh, there's a problem with it. And it is because when I hit display settings and I change the resolution, if I was to change the resolution to my full size, which I won't for the purposes of me recording right now, it wouldn't change the size of my taskbar. It wouldn't change the icons. If I change the scaling uh, to let's say 150%, you see that things are even more janky now like things just aren't aligned at all so that is a problem in this build if i go to 100 things are still janky it's still kind of off um but i like it at a clean 125 percent scaling for the purposes of this monitor here um so that's kind of janky i thought there was something wrong here um and i don't believe i see any uh bug of it inside the uh blog post which i'm about to show you either so uh, this will obviously already be in the feedback hub by the time this video comes out in the first place, but I just wanted to show you guys and show all the uh, Microsoft developers out there, uh, even at Microsoft, that this is in fact a problem right now. Um, so going in, we do have uh, a big notice here before I even get to the dip, deep stuff that the window for switching to the beta channel or from the dev channel to the beta channel is closing. Um, so right now you can freely switch between uh, dev and beta channel because they are receiving the same builds. So this build 22616 uh, goes to the dev and beta channel. They're on the same track. But I can tell that one with the watermark for uh, the dev channel or of the insider channels being removed for temporarily. It will be coming back though uh, in both channels. Uh, I can tell that this is pretty much almost feature complete. They're just trying to iron out some kinks, which this taskbar issue here, let me know if you have that too. As of rewatching this is an issue. I hope that this doesn't make it. I hope not everyone else is having this issue, but I also hope some people are just so that way they can look at it deeper. Um, so thumb that up on the feedback, uh, feedback hub, feedback app, whatever you want to call it. Uh, going through more, they're telling you kind of how to... Uh, they're telling you how to change your channel to the beta channel. So if you want to switch permanently to the beta channel now, now is one of the final times to do it because soon they'll be separating and we'll probably be testing uh, the next version of Windows 11, which will probably be 23H1 because this will be coming out in the second half. This Everything you've been seeing in these uh, insider builds will be coming out in the second half of this year. Uh, so everything we test uh, going forward after they separate the dev and beta channel will be pretty much 23H1 which is going to probably be coming out in the first half of 2023. So there you go. That's how they label it. It's pretty straightforward. Now going through some more, uh, it says they changed, they made some changes to the taskbar, um, the system tray, specifically the show hidden apps button in this area here. Um, and I can already see that that is one of the problems that happened once they made this change. Now we have some issues here. Uh, it says the it's specifically the show hidden icon function will now the will now function the same way it did uh, with the original release of Windows 11, including the ability to rearrange icons in the flyout. As deep as I am into uh, these builds and stuff, believe it or not, I never even knew that you could rearrange this. 
you kind of just hover over and you can move things around. I never knew that you could do this. Now, I can already say one thing that I don't like with this is whereas when you want to rearrange things in your um, taskbar and start menu and stuff, I kind of wish that I knew where things were going. I kind of wish there was a line, like a dividing line telling you like, oh, it's going to go to the left or something because now you just have to drag it on top to rearrange. So that's there. They put it, they reverted it back from the change that they did. Most of us didn't even notice that that change was there unless you read the blog post. Another thing here, it says we previously shared new internet uh, previously, we shared new requirements for internet and Microsoft account on Windows 11 Pro Edition. Today, Windows Insiders on Windows 11 Pro will now require Microsoft account and internet connectivity during the initial out-of-box experience when only setting up for personal use. If you choose to set up a device for work in school, there is no change, and it works the same way as before. They did change that up. Um, so now, just like Windows 11 Home, you also need to now sign in with a microsoft account and uh we share new requirements for signing in with the internet and microsoft account yeah so now you have to sign into a microsoft account and be on the internet in order to set up your device even on pro which sucks um obviously if you're doing a business thing you don't need to worry about that but that sucks i know there's gonna be a lot of gripe and backlash for that but that's how it is and i just wanted to get that out there and then we have some taskbar changes and again they said that it says they fix an issue causing show hidden icons fly out to, in the tray to disappear for some insiders um, and so you have to go into uh, this area in order to set it up basically you go to settings okay so it says we have to first go over to settings personalization so I'm just gonna click this personalization which of course I haven't activated so I don't have much uh, taskbar so if I go down to taskbar and then go all the way down till it says other system tray icons so click that and then you can show what shows up in the system tray. So if I want Razor Central to appear, it will show up in this system tray area. It's not this, sorry, that's the hidden area. This is the system tray area where the microphone is. Uh, you can remove it. I can say I don't want OneDrive there. I can say I want uh, VLC to be down there. VLC is on Spotify and so on. So it doesn't appear in the main taskbar. So if it disappears, uh, you can re-enable it, whatever icons that you have there through going there. So. There you go for that. Uh, widgets, uh, they made an issue fix uh, where if you open the widgets board using a gesture from the side of the screen, you'll see that the widgets board is open and then immediately closed. So it basically made it uninteractable. That's now fixed. And there's a whole bunch of other things. It's not really too many exhaustive lists of fixes. Um, even the known issues is very short, which is the live captions area. Uh, basically saying that if uh, certain apps are near the top of the screen before live captions is run, um, they'll launch behind the live captions. Um, so you'd have to, you know, press alt space bar essentially to make it focus on the app again. So there's a lot of fixes or very little fixes, not too big of a build, um, but it's a build nevertheless. Um, another thing, like I said, is I wanted to talk also about the group policy things that changed in this build or not in this build, but in, in the previous build that I didn't cover. So let's switch gears to look at this other blog that kind of talked about those group policies. Alrighty, so right now I'm looking on bleepingcomputer.com because they have a very straightforward set of telling you what changed in build 22610 in terms of group policy changes. And basically they added a bunch of little things you can do in your group policy, your local group policy editor. And if you don't know what this is, uh, you can probably just like move on from this video at this point. but. If you do or you were interested in what this is, maybe I'll have a separate video talking deeper about what group, local group policies are on Windows as a whole. So it says here, if you go over here to basically the user configuration and then you go to administrative templates, double click that, and then you go to start menu and taskbar, there's a number of little group policies here. And again, I'm not going to explain it in this video what group policies are. But there's a number of new group policies here, such as disable quick flyouts, quick settings flyout. So if I just scroll down and I look for disable quick settings flyout, uh, that's the balloon notification. There's a whole lot of flyouts here. I wish there was a way to search for this actually, but there's no way to search the group policy editor. Um, but basically they added a whole bunch of things here, such as um, disable all taskbar settings, disable notification center and calendar flyouts, hide task view. Um, you can disable the start layout, obviously, which that was already there. The disable start context menus and a whole bunch of stuff. And you'll see them um, as you scroll through this group policy area here. 
basically with all these changes you really have to just restart your computer to get them to really show a lot of the time they even have one here the very old one i can already tell it says here requirements windows server 2008 windows server 2003 vista or xp this is a very old group policy because they're saying stuff about bringing back the classic start menu in windows 2000 professional which is insane um that's very old clearly it shouldn't be here but it's here because windows is a bloated mess in terms of code so they just kind of add on things but that's not the point of this. The point is there's a bunch of new group policies and I kind of am interested in why the changes came uh, in terms of adding these. And when I see these changes, I think the reason, and I, I agree with what Paul Therat says um, from uh, therat.com, he said that basically these are a lot of changes that in order for businesses and IT departments to adopt Windows 11, it's kind of like this is feedback um, that they gave saying we won't take Windows 11 into our business until you give us at, like group policy access to these things. Because these are very specific things such as hiding all apps and start, disabling start context menus, hiding recommended, and so on. Because a lot of the idea is businesses, uh, businesses want everything to be the same so that way when a support call comes in, um, everyone's computer is pretty much the same and they can just say hey this icon is in this corner because the icon will always be there due to them having put it there and locked it so no one else can change it so that's essentially the group policy stuff i'm not going to go too deep in it in this video but maybe i'll talk about overall what group policies are in a separate video just kind of teaching the world about that so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about all these things that happened um, that i kind of missed through the final exams and stuff let me know what you guys think my name is kwaku and have a great day